hey guys welcome back to my channel so i am back with a brand new dashboard and this dashboard will be designed from start to end in power bi software and our today's topic is e-commerce sales dashboard so in front of your screen you can see this beautiful dashboard and this beautiful dashboard is completely interactive and dynamic which will be operated by using some slicers or filters and there are also some interactive filters inbuilt in the dashboard which will be driving this particular dashboard so uh, let me show give you on demo uh, how this particular dashboard actually works you can see at the top there is a slicer present over here which is a customer segment actually and there are three segments so when i click on consumer segments you can see the dashboard will be changing with respect to that and we will be getting our uh, you know uh, those particular values with respect to that particular customer segment right so these are the different segments by which the dashboard will be operated and if you can see when i click on this particular consumer segment all the values kpis are dynamic over here and you can see these are the year on year actually percentage and the trend over here and it is completely dynamic in such a way that if it is increasing the background color will change into green and if it is decreasing the background of that particular color will be changing into red which will give an indication that yeah it is decreasing or if it is increasing same over here as well i have shown here the trend and you can see there are different colors over here which represents for that particular green color it is increasing and if it is decreasing it is giving uh, that particular trend is given into a red color so these types of small things we will see how to design this and if you can see uh, i have also used some interactive filter so when i click on office uh, supplies that is the customer category with respect to that we will get the particular dashboard uh, filtered out similarly for furniture similarly for when we check it for uh, of uh, technology as well similarly if you want to see something by region when i click on this particular that is central region all the values are uh, we can see uh, change with respect to this central region similarly uh, when we click on this particular east region uh, the map as well as some uh, all the values are also changed with respect to that and let's say if you want to see uh, sales of that particular with respect to any state okay so let's say i'm clicking here on to the california state so it will give us the result with respect to all the california state over here right so in this way we will be designing this dashboard which will give an enormous number of insights to our customer to our stakeholders whoever will be the user uh, it will be helpful for him to drive his business all right and uh, let's come towards the elements which are there uh, on this particular dashboard so at top you can see there is a kpi banner over here and this kpi banner is not a simple kpi it is an advanced kpi banner which uh, shows a number of things over here i will explain you one by one so this is a year to date sales and this more this dashboard is more focused towards the year to date quantities or facts which we are going to show uh, and it is mainly showing the year to date sales profit quantity and margin over here so you can see this is a year to date sales value and with respect to that uh if the trend is increasing or decreasing uh, with respect to last year and whether that particular value or uh, we will find out the year on year growth percentage so this is a year on year growth percentage whether it is increasing or decreasing and if it is decreasing with respect to that we can see the background color of this particular api should change with uh to red color if it is decreasing and it should be changed to green color if it is increasing so this is also dynamic with whatever value which we are showing over here similarly uh, for uh, we will be showing your year to date profit and one more thing you, here you can see there is a trend line over here with respect to each month you can see whenever i am hovering of my mouse onto this we can see this february sum of sales are there which is uh, you know uh, it is something around 0.9 million all right so in this way we are going to show a multiple information into this particular kpi and this this gives and trend of uh, this particular sales uh, year to date sales for that particular current year how it is performing month on month all right and it is similarly for all other facts as well so we are showing year to date profit we are showing year to date quantity also we are showing year to date profit margin okay so this particular kpi banner itself gives three or four types of information to our particular whoever, whoever will be our customer right then we have sales by category so the year it is a customer category actually and uh, you can see there are different categories year to date sales previous year to date sales are uh, we are showing here and what is the year on year percentage and what is the trend you can see if it is decreasing it is given in red color if it is increasing 
it will be shown into uh, green color and it is with respect to let's say we are changing to our another segment so you can see it is fully dynamic okay so these values are also completely dynamic if they are increasing or if they are decreasing all right so with respect to that we are going to design this particular dashboard and then we are showing the sales by state so this is a bubble chart which we have created for this particular geographical location which is for united states and it gives an idea of uh, with respect to uh, each state what is the year to date sales and we can see larger the bubble size the more number of sales has been done in to that particular state you can see here california have done the maximum number of sales into that particular uh, year right it and we have categorized it with respect to uh, region so we have gave color with respect to region you can see uh, we can use this particular region as well to sort this particular uh, what we can say chart as well and then we are showing the top five products and bottom five products with respect to year to date sales then we have year to date sales by region over here uh, which gives an idea with respect to which region uh, uh we are getting uh, the respective values right and we are showing the year to date sales by shipping type so whether it is a standard class first class or second class all right so this is a complete overall idea of this particular dashboard and we will be using a uh, ms sql server connection for this particular dashboard i will show you how to import the data then i will show you how to connect it with our power bi desktop and if you don't have ms sql server i will also show you how to connect it with or the text file as well okay so not to worry on that and this dashboard is uh, the data which we are using for this particular dashboard i will add a link into the description box from where you can download and i have actually taken this data from kaggle website but i have done so many of modifications onto this particular data so if you are uh, downloading it from kaggle it will be not the exact data which i am using here i have added some columns i have cleaned that data and it has been structured in such a way that it will be useful for us to you know uh, represent in the form of dashboard so uh, i will add a link for that as well so i have created some more dashboards in power bi software in tableau software and as well as in excel software as well so here are some of the dashboards uh, you can go ahead and explore those as well if you are interested these are the uh, the videos are complete start to end build so this is an IPL analysis dashboard, which is a trending topic, which IPL is going on right now. Then this is a Power BI dashboard uh, for HR analytics. Then this is a road accident analysis. And these are some dashboards which are designed in Tableau. So this is again IPL analysis, the HR analytics, road accident dashboard, sales dashboard, e-commerce dashboard, which is built with some another data. We are using some another data. Then this is a credit card complaint dashboard. And there are some Excel dashboards as well. So this is a road accident dashboard. HR analytics dashboard and e-commerce sales dashboard which is again made up of some different data all right so if you are interested you can go ahead and explore i will add the links for you uh, in the description of this video or you can always go ahead and visit my channel data tutorials all right and before starting our this particular video that is end to end project of e-commerce in power bi i request you to go ahead and subscribe my channel because it is free for you but it will give me and motivation right so to bring more and more videos more and more complex dashboard in front of you which will be helpful for you so go ahead and subscribe the channel like the video and share with it your um, uh, friends so that they will be learning some new technologies as well all right so moving ahead so uh, we will be using some different steps into this project and every step will be explained in detail into this particular video and so first we will see what is the problem statement which we have got from our uh, customer or from our stakeholders then we will see how to import this data into ms sql server then we will go ahead and connect that ms sql server to our power bi desktop then we will do some data cleaning if required then we will do some data processing we will also do some data modeling we will go ahead and create a date table which will be used for time intelligent functions then we will also do some in data modeling we will be connecting three different tables in power bi so we will do we will see how to create a relationship in between them then we will do some data visualization we will create a dashboard and then at last we will generate some insights from the dashboard which we have already created all right then coming next this is our problem statement which we have got from our customer so uh, the data which we are having it is a us based e-commerce sales company 
and they want us to create a sales dashboard showing information of year to date sales so they are more focused on year to date sales and they want to generate insights for the below given scenarios okay so the first one is they want us to create a kpi banner showing year to date sales profit quantities sold and the profit margin all right so they want some overall idea about their sales profit and quantity which will help them how their uh, business is performing with respect to current year sorry with respect to the last year how current year is performing and they will take some business decision based on that and they also want us to find year on year growth so with respect to last year what is the growth of current year all right and uh, they also want us to show a spark line or uh, we can also say a trend monthly trend where they will uh, go ahead and see how their uh, sales are done with respect to each month all right then they want us to find year to date sales previous year to date sales year on year sales growth for different customer category okay so we have a category uh, with respect to that they want to find out the this particular facts as well and they want us to add a trend icon for each category all right then we have to find year to date sales by each state then top five and bottom five products by sales then we have to find year to date sales by region to know which is the best and worst performing region all over the country all right and we will be also finding out year to date sales by shipping type to get best shipping type uh, uh, which is given to our uh, customers and find out which is the best one uh, having highest percentage all right so this is our um, you know a very short problem statement in actual there will be a number of pages uh, where you will be given a problem statement in actual industry and in that they will give you what color codes you are using what font should be used what charts should be used uh, what logic is needed with respect to that particular chart so this is an just an overall idea of a problem statement we are going to use all right and this you can add into your resume as well all right the next one is what is what you will gain from actually this particular dashboard or this video with a complete project okay what functionalities of power bi you will be learning so very important functionality that is you will know how to connect the power bi to ms sql server and we will also see how to connect it to flat files because in actual industry you have to work uh, on the data which is present on some cloud servers or which will be present in some by of the databases all right then we will see how to create a data modeling because whenever you are using any relational database uh, always remember you don't have you will not be working on one single file you have to work on multiple files all right then we will be using the data cleaning uh, we will be doing some data cleaning in power query if required already i have done some cleaning but uh, let's see if it is required to do any cleaning in power query then we will create a data a date table in power bi which will be used to uh, you know uh, uh, apply our date time intelligence functions all right and we will be using the time intelligence functions like total year to date same period last year so these are used to determine year to date and last year sales then we will be creating some dynamic and complex kpis which i already shown you in our dashboard then we will be using some basic to advanced tax queries we will be using most important thing that is conditional formattings okay adding dynamic icons which i showed you with respect to the values the color of that icons will be changing the color of background will be changing then we will be using uh, different tax functions like calculate sum sum x filter values selected values and all others right uh, we will be also using some different charts maps and we will also then format them okay then we will generate the insight from the chart and then at last we will export to this particular report and the versions which we are using to develop this power bi report is uh, for power bi we will be using version 2.116.9660 so which is released in april 2023 so i am using the latest version and uh, then i am using a mssql server which is 19.0.2 and the excel version which i am using is an office 2021 okay so i hope you will be using a latest version uh, because there are some functions for power bi which are not present uh, in the old versions and which i will be using in this particular video all right okay guys let's have a quick walkthrough on the data which we have and uh, this particular data you can download uh, from the description box i have added link for you to download and as i told this uh, data is downloaded from the kaggle website and there are so many modifications done on this 
and uh, uh, have added some few columns i have changed few columns i have changed the spellings of few of the columns then i have also uh, cleaned this data so uh, so let's have uh, what uh, let's see what we have in the data so uh, if you can see there are around 21 fields are there and if we can see the total number of rows are around you can see 113k that is around 1 lakh rows are there so this is a good amount of data to visualize and let's see what fields we have so the first one you can see is the customer id so this is the id of the customer for each order or each uh, what we can see order he placed from that particular website then this is the name of the first uh, that is customer the first name of the customer the last name of the customer then we have uh, from which category the order has been placed then what was the product he have purchased under which segment that particular category and product name fall uh, what is the city of that particular customer uh, from where from which state he have ordered this particular uh, order we can say then uh, we, we we also have a uh, customer country that is united states uh, we are analyzing for united states uh, uh, from united states from which region he is ordering that particular order <laughs> then we have the delivery status like uh, uh, shipping on time shipping cancelled likewise all right so this is the delivery status uh, then we have order date the date on which this particular order has been ordered then we have order id as well uh, what is that particular order id then we have a ship date so if you can see uh, if you are purchasing any uh, what we can say anything from our uh, website from their website so when when was it shipped and when was it delivered so these are this is some different uh, we can say aspects of this particular data then what is the days of shipments uh, scheduled what is the real days uh, which was scheduled like what was committed and what was actual uh, shipment then uh, what was the discount given on that particular order what was the sales done on that particular order how many quantities were purchased and on that particular quantities or an order what was the profit made okay so this all the data which we are using here it's all a dummy data it's not a real-time data of any of the industry so this is a total dummy data which is made for visualization purpose so same kind of data or same format of data may be used by you in the industry so it will be helpful for you um, to apply some logic same uh, which we are applying here uh, in real time industry as well all right so this is the first table which is e-commerce data or we can say uh, orders data and the second one more uh, file we have here is uh, let me show you so this is one more file which gives an information of us uh, us states uh, longitude and latitude codes okay so if you can see into this particular data we do not have any latitudes and longitude codes uh, of this particular cities or the states from which the customer is ordering uh, what we can say few orders so we have a state into this particular longitude and latitude codes sheet then we have latitude and longitude their exact coordinate uh, how to specify them and what is the name of that particular state okay so what we will be using in our uh, modeling is we will be connecting this sheet with our this particular us state sheet and then we will go ahead and what uh, we will start analyzing our uh, project all right so this is a complete walkthrough on the data so always remember study your data first which is a first rule whenever you are going to analyze anything or design everything okay so first study the data 70 percent of solution you will get from the data itself you will know from uh, which level of granularity the data is flowing uh, what is the uh, what we can say what is the depth of the data what is what at what is at higher level what is at lower level and in between how the data is flowing uh, what is the uh, what we can say granularity which i told you and with respect to that when you get some idea you can paper out your design you can paper out your what we can show what logic which should we, we should be using uh, what charts we should be using with respect to that then you can go ahead and start designing your dashboard okay so once data is studied the dashboard designing is uh, you know just a visualization thing all right so it's uh, like we, we can say only 30 to 40 percent of work we do in visualization so other work is done mainly on data itself right reading the data understanding the data understanding the domain knowledge okay so if you are uh, working on e-commerce websites or e-commerce data in future you should know how their company websites or their e-commerce website runs okay how the order is placed how it is how the data is flowing from higher end to the lower end okay 
uh, how the data is captured all these things all right so this is important and now what we will do the next thing what we have to do in our project is we will have to upload this particular data files into our ms sql server right and after uploading we will connect that particular server to our power bi desktop all right i will show you both the ways how to connect with ms sql server and we can directly connect these flat files to our uh, directly to uh, the power bi desktop okay so we are using a dot csv file you can see the name of this is dot csv file it, it is not an xlx file uh, which is an proper excel file so this is a comma separated file so now let's go ahead and open our server management so i will just open my server management studio so, and it will take some time to open so you will have to install this particular management uh, sql server i have already told you which version i am using you can see 19.0.2 then it will ask you uh, so this is server name you we can see this server name is important for us because the name of this server we will be using in power bi the same server name you have to enter into our power bi uh, whenever you are connecting our ms sql server with power bi desktop okay so server name is important then just click on connect and you can see your uh, you will see on the left hand side you can see different folders are there and in that you can see first folder is a databases so when i click on this so you can see there are different databases over here so what i will do i will create a new database for our uh, what we can say uh, the data that is e-commerce data so to do that i will just click on this databases i will right click over here and i will you have an option here new database i will just click on this so uh, it is asking us what should be the name of database so i will apply, i will name it as e-commerce uh, e-commerce database so one sec e-commerce underscore database okay so you can give any name it is not necessary that you should giving you should be giving the same name which i have given and i will just click on ok and you can see a new database has been added over here so when i click when i expand this particular thing you can see there are different folders available here and one which is important for us is tables so right now you can see there are no tables available in this particular database so we have to import our csv file as a table into this particular database all right so now how to do that so what we can do is first to import a table or import a flat file into our database so i will just click on database then right click here okay then you have a task and in task you can see there is one option called import flat file okay so i will just click on this then uh, you will have to just click on next and now it is asking you where is your flat file located you have to first download the flat file from the description box place it in a folder wherever you want to and you can go ahead and browse this so i will just browse this and for me it is placed in uh, this particular folder in data okay so first what we will do i will just import this file that is e-commerce data i will just click on open and then all other well, then it is asking you what should be the name of this table into this particular database so i will just not change the name of this if you want you can change so i will just keep it as uh, same and this is what the schema name is dbo is nothing but the database object okay then i will just click on next and you can say uh, cannot open the file because it is it is open in another application so what we have to do is we have to close the files which are open here so i will just close this and i will close this as well and i will just click on ok because if it is opened in background it will not be imported here and now i will just click on next so now you can see here this is a sample data which is generated okay so you can go ahead and check each and every column it is populating correctly or not if there are any nulls generated over here so this is sample data that is first 50 rows are generated and it is asking us like if is this particular structure correct and then us we have to click on next okay so now all the custom columns or the columns which are there in our data file have been uh, visible or are visible over here you can see and it is uh, it has auto automatically taken the data types over here all right so now here we can see it is n n where care 50 but we have to change this data type i uh, will be changing it to uh, where care 50 okay so you can see there is a drop down over here and i will change everything to where care 50 so where care 50 is nothing but a uh, varying character uh, data type which will be taking alphanumeric value or will it can be taking only also it can only take a string value okay so you can see customer id was something which was like 
um, ci underscore some value okay so it is alphanumeric right and all other you can see like orders quantities these are floats or either they are an integer so we will not change this but wherever there are string data type we will be changing it to where care 50 so we will do do it for everything and just for product name because i saw i, sh I shown you the data the product name you can also check into excel file the product name uh, the names or product are very much large okay so what we will do we will give a large number of the 50 the later what we can see a number in 50 here is nothing but total number of 50 words can be inserted into that particular call right so let's say um, uh, what is the name of this particular uh, first name that let's say first name is sopnaji okay so sopnaji have eight to nine characters so it should not exceed 50 characters right let's say someone's name is akash so a k a s h so five letters okay so it, sh it should not exceed 50 characters likewise so but product name is greater than this so i will just select worker 50 and we will just change its size to 200 because its value is large so let me select worker 50 and i will change it to once again I will change this to 200 okay and for all other things wherever you are seeing n varchar change it to varchar 50 so i will just do it in bit of uh fast i will just change this to varchar 50 make sure you are changing it to varchar 50 only so i will just fast forward this into my video varchar 50 Okay, so you can see guys every uh, for all the string data types wherever we have the string value or alphanumeric value I have changed it to varchar 50 and all other the date field is it has taken the correct data type for date and for the float values or where whichever values are in terms of decimal points it have taken float which is correct and for small integers like orders orders maybe one two three four five likewise it has taken the tiny integer okay don't take any primary keys because we do not have any primary keys all in customer id there are some duplicates available over here okay so we'll just click on next and uh, we have to click on finish okay so it will take some time to process the data and it is saying we have got an error so just click on this error and you will know what is the error here so uh, error inserting file received an invalid column length for client for colid file okay so bpc client for uh so we have got an invalid column length so let's go back and see what is that so you can see here uh oops so you can see for product name i have i have done it 50 again so we have to do it 200 actually i mystically i did it 50 so i have to do it 200 because the product name uh, characters are very large the product names are very large so 50 will be not an feasible size for that particular data type so we have taken 200 click on next and now we'll click on finish so now let's see so it is taking some time to import and you can see we have got a complete operation as an success as an message over here so i'll just click close and what i will do i will just right click over here and refresh this database okay so just click on refresh and i will just expand the tables and here you can see we have got a table that is e-commerce data okay so this is the table which we needed to add now next we have to add one more table same procedure we have to uh, follow that is import flat file then i will just click on next i will browse my file and this time we will be taking us state longitude latitude codes click open i will keep the name as same click on next click on next and here again we will change this to varchar 50 change it to varchar 50 same the name also we will change to varchar 50 okay then we will uh, just click on next click on finish and the data has been successfully imported and i will just click on close again i will just go ahead and click on refresh okay expand this and you can see the both the tables are been added over here now let's see how the data looks in ms sql server 
so i will just right click over here and i will click on new query okay so what we will do uh, we will fire a query and we will see if our data has been correct imported correctly or not so to see all the data we will be using a select statement select star from e-commerce data okay so this is the data which we have added that is e-commerce data the name of this file is e-commerce data i will just select this or you, uh, you can directly click on execute over here so i will just click on execute and you can see the data has been added over here so total rows like you can see one one three seven three two seven zero rows which are the same rows which i showed you in our excel file so same number of rows are added over here and you can see these are the columns which are added all right so so this has been successfully added let's see the second file so i will just delete this and we will add the name next table over here that is us underscore longitude latitude score so i will just double click and i will execute this as well so this is uh, 52 rows which are 52 states into our us and these are their codes that is latitude and longitudinal codes name of that particular state and this is what uh, abbreviation we can say for that particular name of the state all right so now you can see we have successfully added our both the flat files uh, into our ms sql server database so now next step is what we have to connect our power bi to this particular flat files okay so i have taken a new power bi desktop worksheet and in front of you you can see this is the ui you will get whenever you will open a new workbook file and now what we have to do is we have to connect our power bi to ms sql server where we have already imported our two files and those two files we will be using uh, into our uh, what we can say this particular sheet to analyze our uh, what we can say or to build our dashboard all right so now to do that what we have to do here is uh, you can say in front of uh, this in on this particular screen itself you can see there are some connectors available over here and in that you can see there is a import data from sql server so we are going to use this particular connector so when i click on this particular connector uh, so it will ask you to connect to this ser sql server database you will have to enter the server name and you have to enter here the database name which is optional but uh, we should enter because whenever there are multiple uh, databases onto that server all will be opened and you will uh, you will have to you know spend some time to find your files so it is better you should mention the database file name over here so what should be the server name which i've already told you uh, while importing our files into server uh, that particular name we will be using so when i come back you can see the sopnajit slash sql 2022 so this will be the server name for me for you it will be something different so i will just use it here sopnajit oops sorry sopnajit slash sql 2022 okay so this is my server name and the database name is nothing but this is the database name which we have added here that is e-commerce underscore database okay so we will be adding that here e-commerce underscore database all right so d is capital and now we just have to click on okay so whenever i hit okay so it is uh, taking an interaction or it is preparing a connection between our sql server and our uh, power base so you can see this is our sql server name which we have uh, added over here and from that particular database that is e-commerce database there are two tables over here which have been uh, visible or which are visible in our power base so what i have to do is i just select both of them so this is the data uh, which we will be importing and one more table we have to use so i will select both of them and i will just click on load all right so when you click on load so it will take some time to load the data which we are taking from the sql server database it is creating a connection in the model so let's wait until it loads that until the data is loaded so you can see all the rows are been retrieved all the rows have been added and now to see our data you can go into this data view okay so in data view you can see the data has been added over here which we have already imported and this is the that is uh, longitude and latitude data of us states okay so these are the two data which you can from here you can go ahead and see here all right so next thing what we have to do is we have to do a modeling okay so we can do modeling with respect to our uh, 
uh, what we can say whatever files we have here all right so now uh, you can see if we have to generate a relationship over here and if you can see into our data uh, here we have a customer state right so so here you can see this is the column into our main data file that is e-commerce data that is a customer state okay so here it is so this is the customer state there which where there are multiple customers uh, states so you can see these are repeated over here and because there may be multiple customer from that particular state and each row gives us an information about customer and their orders which they have ordered so this is our customer state and into our next us data you can see there is a name column which gives us the state of that particular us okay so what we have to do is we have to join our data based on these two particular fields that is name from us longitude and latitude data and from e-commerce data we will be using the customer state because these are the two matching fields over here so we will go into our model view and we will find out the customer state so here is the customer state so we will just take it i will take that field i will and i will release and place it over the name okay and so what happens here is this particular uh, relationship have been generated over here and you can see when i hover over my my uh, mouse here you can see with respect to that relationship these two particular fields are being used in these two particular joins or in this particular relationship and it is a one to many okay so in this particular sheet there is a single uh, state or each row have one particular state but in this particular there are multiple states are there so we, it have joined one to many okay star means many one to many relationship all right so now this is something we have connected our flat file uh, now we have connected our ms sql server with our power bi desktop i will show you one more uh, way in which we, we you will be directly connecting to our flat files okay so this is very much easy so for that what i will do i will just go into report and i will take a new file over here okay so i will just take a new file okay so now most of you may not have a flat file connection or uh, ms sql server connection so in that case you can always go ahead and uh, use this flat file connection it will not stop you to design this particular dashboard okay so i have kept both the way from where you can go ahead and prepare this particular dashboard all right so now when you don't have a uh, ms sql server uh, how to connect to our flat file so you can see we have an option here called get data okay or you can click here as well so let's do it from here so you can see get data from another source because we do not have csv connection over here which are an automatic connectors which are already placed onto this sheet so i will just click on get data from another resource it will take some time to open that particular dialog box so you can see it is asking us from where you want so i will be using a file and in that file i will be using a csv connection so just click on csv and click on connect okay and now it will ask us from where you are importing your data so i will just go ahead and find my data and i will just select this okay or you can select uh, any one so i will just select us data first and i will just click on open uh, i will i have selected the e-commerce data okay so i will just uh, show you so this is the file which we will be importing now and i will just click on load all right so it will first load a first file and then we have to create an, another connection uh, that is to flat file and load another file again okay so this is our first file which is loading so it will take some time to load all right so this file has been added we will go into our data view and this is the first file which we have added all right and when we go into our modeling where we have to connect our multiple files over here or multiple dash multiple uh, tables over here so here you can see only one file so we want one more file that is us latitude and longitude uh, codes file right so now we have to take it from here again so you have an option over here so you can just drop down this okay so i will just drop down this particular and you can see this has been expanded and there is an option here called get data so i'll just click on this get data and here the option is called text or csv i'll just click on this select this file and click on ok so it will take some time and click on load and you can see our this particular mm -hmm. file also have been generated over here all right and now again we have to connect our customer state with our name don't connect state to this state okay this state is an abbreviation this name column actually contains all the name of the states all right so now we can see one to many relationship have been uh, inserted over here 
and you can go ahead and start your design from here okay so this is a flat file connection you will be doing when you don't have ms sql server so for now what i will do i will just close this and i will be using connection where i have used ms sql server okay so i will just close this and i will not save this and this is for the file where we have already connected our ms sql server so we, we can see in get data model view so we've already created one relationship over here uh, that is with respect to state one name all right so now what i will go i will again go into data view and click on e-commerce data so this is the data which have been added over here and most important thing go ahead and analyze each and every field over here okay <laughs> you can see this is the customer id check if each and every field is having correct data type or not so this is the drop down so this will hide the uh, what we can say this particular bar over here and its full name uh, actually and its logo so i will just expand this and now what i will show you i will um, in i will just analyze uh, all the data is correctly added over or not and i will show you which columns are important for you to check okay so check each and every columns if it is correctly added with respect to our data and most important thing is to check the order date okay check when you click on to this order date you can see there is an format uh, which is popped up over here check that if the data type is correctly that is date okay and for this particular which date has been selected okay you can select any date but it is important that a date should be a data type similarly for a sheep date and for all other uh, we can say string values or it should be text okay and for like days wherever you should numbers it should be a whole number and in case of decimal points you can see it is a decimal number okay similarly here as well all right so these data types is very much important for you to check and then you can always check this uh, latitude and longitude it is not uh, also this table does not contains uh, much number of fields so it is easy to check here state is nothing but this is the abbreviation name is uh, you can check this the name it is text latitude is a decimal number this is also correct and this is also text okay so all right we have checked everything and uh, what we will do i will just go again to our e-commerce data so in this particular data as i have told you i have already cleaned the data in excel file uh, which was very much messy i could not make a video on that on how to clean the files but i will definitely make uh, whenever i get a good file where where i can show you how to do a cleaning process in excel so for now i have already cleaned so you don't need to do a data cleaning again for this particular file because it is already being cleaned so we will just go ahead and start our uh, actual design okay so now uh, i will just go to our model view or just let's come to our uh, report view okay so now what we have to do is uh, i will sh just show you the dashboard which we have already built over here so first thing what we will be doing is we will be designing this kpis okay we will design this entire kpi and then we will go ahead and touch our charts okay so now to design our entire kpis and as we are using some year to date functionalities we have to determine year to date sales and profit always remember whenever you have to determine year to date uh, sales profit or any quantity or any fact in uh, future or whenever you are working in an in industry always remember to create a date table okay so date table is nothing but a customized table which we will be creating in tableau uh, in power bi which will help us to use time intelligence functions okay so now which are time intelligence functions like i told you like total ytd same period last year total mtd total qtd so these functions are used to determine uh, what we can see with respect to that particular major or with respect to using date we will be determining some values like what is today's sales what are quarterly sales what are yearly sales okay so in that case we have to create one proper date column which will give us an accurate result so power bi recommends us to create a date table all right so i will come back again to our sheet so before determining our kpis we will be creating a date column okay or a date table so for that what i will do i will just go to our data view over here and in this particular table tools okay so you have to go from home help any table tools you have different options over here and in that one option is called new table so i will just click on this particular and we will be using some dax queries to determine our or to create our table okay so for for 
to data, to create a date table i will name my table as a calendar okay so i will be creating one calendar table which will be uh, used for time intelligence function which i already told you okay so now to determine this particular table so this table what does this do is so whatever data we have in our order right so first i will show you which what data we have okay so i will just close this and i will just show you how many years of data we have so we have two years of data so if we, uh, i will show you here in order date okay so this is the 2021 is the first data when i go to last 31st december 2022 so we have two years of data and with respect to these two years only we have to create a date table okay so date table is something whatever data we have same table we will be creating for our date table we will be not using all the years data like from 2000 to 2022 so it will unnecessary increase load on tableau and it will take some some time to evaluate our calculations so i will just again go to our data view and then what we will do we have to go in table tools and i will create a new table all right and i will name it as calendar okay so this is my name of the table and for this i will be using a calendar function you can give any name okay so whatever name you want you can give name it as date table you can name it as a calendar table okay and i will be using a calendar dax function over here so when i when i use this function it is asking us what should be the start date and what should be the end date of this particular date column so now this should be dynamic okay we, we do not have to hard code any dates over here so it should be dynamic so what we will be using i will be using a minimum date and i will capture the date from e-commerce data that is nothing but order data okay so i will take this order date which will be captured from e-commerce data so whenever the data is changing in e-commerce table it will be changing here in the calendar table right so start date will be always dynamic in similar way we have to keep our uh, end date also dynamic now as we have the data only for uh, 31st of december 2022 but in actual case whenever you will be working in real-time industries where you will be having live data so instead of using your max function which i will be using you can use a today function here directly okay so you can directly click here today and i will just close this okay so when i click on today and when i hit here right so you can see this is the minimum date and if i go ahead and see my latest date maximum date that is 13 5 2023 so today i am making a video it is 13th of may 2023 because we have used here today function so it is taken the latest date as 13th whenever you will open this workbook tomorrow here you will get the latest date as 14th okay but as i have a history data i will not unnecessarily increase my uh, you can say the date range you can keep it as it is but uh, i recommend to use whatever it is there into our data but in real time always use today because you will be having a live data i will just close this and i will be using this max of order date okay so this will be why you can say start date will be minimum of order date and end date will be maximum of order date i will just hit right here okay so now you can see last date will be now 31st of uh, december 2022 because in our e-commerce data table the last date was 31st and first date was 4th of january 2021 okay so now we have created our calendar table so from this calendar table what i will do i will extract the year from here and also i will extract the month from here all right so to do that what you have to do i will in this particular table i will create a new column so i will just click on this particular new column over here and it is asking her what should be the name of the columns so i will be using year year will be the name of my column and i will be using year function here as and it is asking us what should be the date now don't use order date over here so date is what this is the date name over here that is this date we are using that is date and we'll just scroll this up you can see calendar date so from calendar date we have to extract the date not from order date close this and hit okay you can hit enter or you can click on this particular checkbox also all right so you can see year has been extracted from this date we have to create one more column that is month okay so because to show our spark lines or our trends we have to create a month column as well and i will just click again on this particular new column and in this case it will be my month name 
or it will be month and for we don't have month functions we have a month function but month function does not return us the name of that particular month it will return us the number of that particular month like in case of january it is written as one february it will return as two likewise but we have we want the name of that particular month so we'll be using a format option here and it is asking us value value is nothing but date table okay so this is our date comma what should be the format okay so in double inverted comma type four times m okay so four times m is nothing but it will give us the full name of the month okay and i will just hit okay and you know you can see we have got the month also right so wherever we have that particular month you will get a month month wise data all right so now we have created our calendar table but we have we haven't yet modeled it or we haven't created any relationship with our already existing these two tables okay so this table is created but there is no relation of this table with respect to the other two tables so we will go back to our data modeling and you can see a new table has been created over here that is calendar table so i will just bring it over here and now what we have to do is we have to create a relationship between these two tables with calendar table right so this all three tables will be connected so now what we have done is we have created this calendar table from order date so i will just find your order date okay so we can see this is an order date and we will place it with or we will connect it with date from the calendar table so i will just take this and i will just put it over here okay so you can see it has created a relationship with cardinality as one to many so this is a date over here so for each date there will be one value over here but for this particular date there may be multiple dates into this particular order date so it has created one to many relationship so when i take my mouse on cursor on this particular line it is showing me with what it has been connected okay so this connection should be important in actual real time industry whenever you will be working there there will be here like 10 to 14 tables will be connected to each other and with respect to that you will go ahead and create your reports all right so this is an just a demo so where we have connected three tables okay so this is also a good start for you because uh, when you know how to connect multiple tables you can go ahead and connect uh, more than three tables also okay we just have to find what should be the uh, joining condition in between these three tables okay so here it was state because we wanted our latitude and longitude with respect to state so we have connected our customer state with our this state all right perfect so now we will start our report all right so now before starting the report i will add a background okay so background you can see into our this dashboard you can see a background of this particular uh, report which i have already built so the same background we will be adding over here and to add a background you can go into our format your report page then click on canvas background and from here you can browse your image file over here i will just click here and you can go i will just find this so this is the image which i will be using i will add uh, the link as well for this you from where you can go ahead and download this image as well so you can use this image or you can create your own image and you can uh, use it into your dashboard so i will just click on open so i have added but you cannot see it over here why because the transparency right now is 100 percent. so i will just reduce it to zero percent and now you can see my image has been added over here so after adding our background we will start our actual design but before that we will add our title to this particular dashboard to add a title go to go in insert uh, tab over here and here you have shapes so we will add a background shape for this and i will just click on this rounded rectangle shape so this shape has been created over here but you can see when you see at this particular dashboard it is not aligned centrally so i will just click outside of this particular uh, shape anywhere outside and go to our format report page go in canvas settings and instead of tab choose your middle so now it looks good and it will be easy for us to design with our area which we have here now i will just select this particular shape and we will give some background colors for this so for here first i will go in shapes and here i will just choose it as five percent okay so the rounded corners which i will be using here is five percent or you can go ahead and change it to let's say we will take it as eight percent all right and we will go to style and we will change the fill color for this and i will be using a color code for me so i will be using an hashtag 
एट डी टू फोर एट डी ओके सो दिस विल बी द कलर विच आई विल बी यूजिंग एंड द ट्रांसपेरेंसी वी विल बी यूजिंग इज द फिफ्टी परसेंट ट्रांसपेरेंसी वी विल ऑल्सो यूज अ बॉर्डर ओवर हियर एंड फॉर बॉर्डर वी विल बी यूजिंग एंड सेम कलर वी विल बी यूजिंग द सेम कलर फॉर बॉर्डर बट जस्ट ट्रांसपेरेंसी वी विल बी यूजिंग इट एज ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओके सो दिस विल बी द बॉर्डर कलर यू कैन कॉपी द कोड फ्रॉम यर सो फॉर बॉर्डर कोड यू विल बी यूजिंग दिस कोड and i will just click on outside and i will just try to place it over here properly i will go to general go into properties and i will choose my height as 55 and for me the width will be 615 okay so this will be the size uh, for my title and now we will have to add the title name over here so in insert menu you have a text box here click on text box and our title will be e-commerce sales dashboard okay select this particular and we will be using bold and size will be 28 okay so just reduce this and drag it to here all right and now select this particular text box go to effects and here turn off this background all right now select this entire text and here you can choose white as the color all right and now select this entire and just by using arrow keys you can move it up okay so it will be aligned centrally aligned at center so perfect so now we have added our title of the dashboard next now we will start designing our kpis over here all right so now you can see for kpis we have added one more shape over here which will be our placeholder for this particular kpis so what we will do i we will add one more shape over here i will just select this shape okay select this particular shape control c and control v i will i will be using same shape over here because we will be using the same background color and everything is same so i'll be selecting this shape select this shape and we will change the size for this go into properties go in shape go in uh, general and in general we will be using a properties here and for me the width will be 295 and i will be using a height as 133 okay so this will be the size which i will be using select again and i will just reduce this to five percent all right so now this looks good and in this particular thing we will be adding our kpis over here all right so now we will start designing our first kpi and the first kpi is nothing but year to date sales okay so we have to determine year to date sales all right so now to that what i will do i will take a card from here okay so this is the card which will be used to take my kpi over here all right so now i will just expand my data now we have to actual design our kpi but we have to determine year to date sales and year to date sales is determined by using a time intelligence function and for that we have to create a major over here all right so what i will do i will just right click uh, onto this particular table or you can click on right click or any any of this particular uh, field as well and here we have to select new major okay so now we have to write a new major over here so i will name my major as year to date sales all right so this is my year to date sales and i will be using a total okay so i will be using total year to date function okay so this is the time intelligence function and with in this time intelligence function we will be using our date table that is calendar table which we have created and we determine we have to determine the current year sales data that is for 2022 what is the sales okay it is asking us what should be the expression it should be sum we want sum of sales okay that is sales per order we want the sales per order comma next what should be the date okay so date is nothing but we will be using this date that is calendar date because we have already created a relationship between calendar date and order date in our modeling tab okay so we will be using date over here that is calendar date and i will just close this bracket and i will just hit enter okay so now close this and select this particular kpi card and we have to add your fields okay and we have created our year to date sales here you can see a major has been added so you can drag this and put it over here or you can just select this okay 
and you can see our year to date sales uh, field has been added over here right so now this is our first kpi field okay now we will do some formatting on this so i will just go into select this card go to format visuals go in general and in uh, what we can say in effects and turn off the background okay then go to visual and turn off the category label as well because we don't want the label go in call out value and here we will be choosing the font as 27 okay for me it will be 27 and uh, i will be using the color as white and i will choose this as bold okay so you can see automatically it have taken a unit or we can say uh, as millions for us right that is uh, it should be in millions all right but one more thing that your sales are calculated in the form of uh, what we can say dollars okay so now to convert this into dollars what we have to do is select this particular kpi card then this is the measures which we have used select this because we have we are using uh, the data for us so it should be converted to dollars okay so select this particular major you can see a major tool uh, tab has been activated click on this major tools tab then you can see there are formatting options available over here so i will what i will do i will be selecting currency from here so i will be using a dollars i will just click on this particular dollar you can see dollar symbol has been added over here if you want to give some any other currency there is a drop down over here and from this drop down you can choose whichever currency you have to add over here right so now we have added our kpi from here so i will just take it we'll just reduce its size i will take it and i will place it over here all right okay now so what we will do we will go ahead and create our trend line or area chart so if you can see into our prepared dashboard here you can see we have added a trend line over here or a chart over here which will give us the monthly sales okay so now to do that what we will do uh, i will go ahead and take an area chart from this particular visualization i will click on area chart so this is the area chart which has been opened here now what we have to do is we have to add x and y axis so obviously we have to create it for month wise and so for x axis we have to take a month so we have created a calendar table from here so i will just take month and i will put it on x axis and now we have to show here a year to date trend now let's take this year to date sales which we have created so when i take year to date sales on this particular y axis you can see it has been creating a uh, what we can say running total chart okay so we cannot use this year to date sales but we will be using our sales per order over here so i will just take your your sales per order over here and i will put it over here but this particular sales value it will be giving us for both the years that is for 2021 and 2022 but we have to show our year the trend line only for 2022 so to do that what i will do i will just click on this particular filter tab i will go ahead and i will take this month a uh, year from here and i will put it on the filter shelf okay and i will just click on basic filtering okay and make sure you are adding on this chart don't add on this page or on all the pages on this chart means what this filter will be added only on this chart okay and now from here we have to select 2022 so just select 2022 and now our chart has been prepared okay so now let me just collapse this and I, let me expand my chart for you okay so now you can see our data is starting from october and ending at december but our actual calendar year starts from january and it ends at what december but what here it is doing is it has been sorting with respect to what the number of sales which has been done all right so now if you go ahead and start sorting it with respect to month okay so just select on month so what it has done is it has sorted as it is from sorting from september to april okay means what it is sorting with respect to alphabetical order all right so let's do it again and let's sort it descending order okay let's sort it in ascending order again it is sorting from april to september but it should start from january and it should end at december all right so now sorting is something is different in power bi guys so for that what we have to do is we have to sort in such a way that we have to guide that particular measure that is a month measure we have to guide in such a way that it will be sorting from january to december so for that what we have to do we have to do some modifications in our date table okay 
so for that i will again we will go into data view and we will click on our calendar table okay so in calendar table you can see we have created our three columns over here so i will go ahead and create one more column okay so i will just click on new column which will give you giving us the month number okay now here i will be selecting naming it as month number and to get month number i will be using month function okay we can use directly month function and date from this particular calendar date oops that is calendar date close this bracket hit enter okay so you can see the month number has been given so whenever january is there it is it will taking a month number as one for march 3 for february 2 so it is giving us with respect to calendar year we are getting the numbers for that particular month and now this month number we will be using to sort our month column so again we will go to our data report view select this month okay select this month column from our calendar table and here you can see there is an option called as sort of columns by okay just click here and select here with respect to month number okay so as soon as i select this you can see our month has been sorted with respect to our january to december okay so if it is not sorting for you you can go ahead and select this month should be selected here and it should be ascending okay if it is selected as sales per order click on here select so let's see this is sales per order. okay so we don't want to sort it in this way you have to sort it with respect to month and with month also it should be in ascending order okay so you can see we have sorted our uh, what we can say a month with respect to this all right so now we will do formatting on this and uh, for to do some formattings uh, what we will do uh, we will go to our format visual tab and in, we will turn off everything because we don't want anything to be shown over here on x axis drop down this hide this title drop down this hide this title as well we will go in general we don't want any title here as well so we want a clean chart and again select this and you can see there is a dark line over here so we have to hide that as well so click on lines and you can see on lines there are stroke width is three we will just do it zero okay so we don't want any stroke width and then go in general again go in effects and turn off the background for this all right then we will go to our uh, visual again and we have to change the color of this area chart okay so to change the color we have an option lines over here scroll down go to colors click on this and we will choose this color okay so this will be the color which we'll be using this is the color that is uh theme one color that is 60 percent lighter and now we will reduce this and we will try to adjust it to the, our kpi shape okay just take it over here okay i will just fit it end to end perfect so in so in this way we have added our uh, what we can say line chart as well so i will just select this and i will just take it a bit down okay perfect so this looks nice and uh so whenever i'm hovering on this particular mouse you can see in october this was the sales but again you can see for this particular sales should be in order uh, in it should be given as uh currency as a dollar okay so for that what we will do we will go into our uh, sales per order because we are using this as a major select this particular major or this particular field from here not major and click on dollars okay and now when you hover over your mouse you can see it has been converted to dollars all right and uh, what we can we have to also change the currency over here which should uh, that is the decimal places should be two decimal places okay so this is two decimal places and now you can see it is now looking correct and it is a readable format all right so now after this we will go ahead and create our year on year sales growth and we will also try to add this particular icon over here and the background which we can see uh, uh, we can see it is a shape and for which we will be adding some color a dynamic color in such a way that whenever a value is going down it will be showing as in, in a red color and whenever the value is going up it will show us in a green color okay so now let's do this so first what we have to do is we have to determine year on year growth 
but to determine your on year growth we know that to determine your on year growth the formula it is uh, like the current year sales minus last year sales total divided by the last year sales or we also called it as previous year to date sales so for that first we have to determine the previous year to date sales and for that we can take a new measure or we have to create a new measure so click uh, right click anywhere and create a new measure and make sure you are doing it in the e-commerce data itself right so don't do create any major outside of this table so we are right now working for this table itself and i will name it as previous year to date sales okay and so this is also a time intelligence function which we will be using uh, which is called as same period last year and dates year to date so for that we will have to use a calculate function so i will use a calculate function and we have to take an expression as sum of sales okay okay so this is the expression and then we have to add a filter over here so with what filter we have to determine this particular year to date previous year to date sales so we will be using dates year to date okay so this is the dates year to date and then i will have to use a same period last year so this is a function same period last year is nothing but uh, we have to take the period which is last year so for current year to date whatever it is the period we will take the same period for last year and we will determine our previous year to date right so same period last year and what is what should be the date field so date field we will be using a calendar date okay then we will close the three brackets okay and i will just hit enter okay and i will take a new uh, kpi sheets over here and i will show you what is the previous year to date sales and so here you can see the previous year to date sales was 11.63 million and the current one that is year to date sale is 11.53 million okay so the current year sales is going down with respect to this previous year to date sales okay so uh, we have to determine by how many percentage it is uh, you know it is going down or in that way all right so we have to do that so i will just delete this first i've just uh, you know shown the what what quantity we are getting for previous year to date sales and now i will do what i will do i will copy the same because we have already done the formatting over here and now i will select this so what we have to do is after determining previous year to date sales we have to determine year on year sales okay so for that we have to write one more formula over here i will just right click here and i will create a new major and i will name it as year on year sales okay and the formula is nothing but uh, previous year to date sales okay i will add a bracket year to date sales minus previous year to date sales total divided by previous year to date sales okay so this is our year on year sales formula i will just hit okay and i will close this now select this particular kpi now we don't want year to date sales here so just delete this and we want year on year sales so just take this and you can see it is minus 0 0.01 but we want it in the percentage format right so what we have to do is we have to select this major okay then this major tools uh, tab will be activated over here and here you can see uh, display it in the form of percentage either you can click here or from format you can go ahead and select this percentage okay so you can see it has been converted into percentage form all right so now we will do some formatting for this i will go into uh, general in callout value i will name i will take the value font for this as 13 okay and instead of din i will take it as sergio ui bold okay or we can take it as ui semi bold all right and we will just reduce this size a bit okay so that it can take this value all right now what we have to do is i will add a background uh, shape over here which will take this particular color all right so we will go in insert and i will go in shapes and i will add this particular rectangle over here all right and i will just format this i will go in general i will go in properties and for me the height will be 25 and its width i will take it as 100 okay so i will just try to place it over here nice and properly perfect so now this value will go over here right so in such a way that all right i will just do some more formattings okay so this is fine now next thing what we have to do is we have to add a trend icon over here right so now to add a trend icon we have to write one more calculation field over here so what i will do again i will right click over here the trend icon is nothing but this icon which you can see here we have to add this particular icon 
so i will just right click and i will add a major and i will name it as sales trend okay or sales trend whatever icon also if you want you can add it over here then uh, here it will be will be using a dax file okay or a dax function and we will be using a we will create two variables that is one is for positive icon and next next is for negative icon okay instead of what i will do sales trend i will name it as icon okay so it is nothing but it will be uh, easily readable that we have added an icon from by using this particular formula okay so i will add a first variable okay so we have to write where okay then we have to write a first variable i will name it as positive icon okay so for positive icon what should be my variable or what should be my shape or that particular icon to be added and in power bi we can use a unicare function to add this and so first what we will do for positive it will be an up upward arrow so to add an upward arrow there is a unicare value that is 9650 okay so this is an unicare value it will automatically take that particular value over here. so i will press shift enter and then i will write one more variable which will be for negative icon okay so negative underscore icon and here we will be using same again unique error and for a downward arrow we have to take 9660 okay so we have to write 9660 all right so we have entered our two variable now we have to return a result for this so in such a way that uh, it should be taking and you know uh, that particular these two values can be called into that particular function so i will write one more variable and we will be adding a result over here so result uh this nothing but uh for what we can say one more statement we are adding over here that for a result it will be we will be writing an if function okay so if year on year sales okay so we know that if your own your sales are positive right now it is negative but if it is positive if positive is nothing but that if it is greater than zero then we want our first variable that is it should be a positive icon and second if it is false okay so if your own your is not is greater than zero then what should be the result it should be negative icon okay so this condition is well, when this if this condition is true we have to write what should be the output if this condition is false what should be the output okay so in such a way that i will just close this bracket and now what we have to return okay we have to return our what should you return so we have to return our result okay means what so output will be taken from here whatever the condition that particular year on year sales is taking with respect to that we will be returning our result over here okay so then just hit okay okay and now what i will do i will just copy this control c control v and we will be adding our icon here so i will just close this for now and this is our icon so take this and put it over here so we can see we have got our downward icon and this is nothing but our sales trend over here which we have added all right so now next thing so next important thing is we have to add a red color to this particular shape all right so now how to add that red color so add a red color again we have to write one more calculation field which will be used as a gradient field or a fill color for this particular shape which we have added over here so it's a very simple uh, just an uh, red color or green color in that way we have to write that particular major so i will just go ahead and create here one more major and i will name it as sales uh, we can say background color okay or you can you can write anything uh, it's background color is too big so i will name it as sales icon color okay so it's not for this color actually it is for this color but i have wrote it icon color you can write anything so i will write a sales icon color uh, it's just that you should remember what calculations you have written then i will again use a if condition if year on year sales okay if year on year sales is again greater than zero and if this condition is true i want uh, the text to be written as green okay so if it is true it, it should written green and if it is false it should written red okay so in this way this is our calculation which i have wrote and i will just hit okay and you can see a new calculation is written over here so next what we have to do is the shape which we have added over here we have to add a dynamic color for this so in such a way that if the year on year value is decreasing the background color should be changed to red color 
and if it is increasing it should change to green color all right so for that what we have to do is we have to again create a calculated measure over here so i will just right click and i will create a new measure over here and i will name it as sales color okay so you can name any you can give any name so for now i will be using sales color and i will be using a if condition over here and i will add my logical test so if year on year sales is again greater than zero so if this condition is satisfied if it is true then i want green color okay so make sure you are writing it in double quotes because we are adding a string over here so this is a green color and if if it is false okay if it, this condition is not satisfying then it should be in red color so close this and close this as well so make sure you are writing a correct spelling over here because this same spelling or the same particular calculation will be using to give conditional formatting okay so i will just click on okay close this so now you can see here this particular uh, what we can say field or measure has been created now select this particular icon okay so after selecting this icon make sure this is very important step you go in shape okay go in shape go in style and first this turn off this particular field okay so you can give from here also but turn off this field now go in general then go in effects and here turn on this particular background then go in this particular conditional formatting okay so these are static colors we want to give a dynamic color so go in function okay then here are different like color effect backgrounds are there different options are there here to change the colors it should be in gradient or whatever it is but we don't want it in gradient we want by rule okay and what on what field we have to give this particular rule so it should be on color okay it, and it will be a sales color and if this value is equal to green okay so if it is green so make sure you are writing same text whatever you have written into your calculation so if it is green i will add a green color so i will just take a more colors from here and we will choose a green color from here let's choose this and after that i will add one more rule over here and if it is red okay so we have to choose a red color i will go in more colors and we will choose a red color from here so let's take this value okay so this will be my red color and i will just hit okay okay so as soon as I, as I hit okay you can see the color of this particular shape has been changed right so now i will again select this shape and we will remove this particular uh, what we can say style and we will remove the border of this okay we don't want border so i will just turn off this and now you can see this particular shape has been added over here so whenever that particular we are operating it with respect to slicer so let's say we will operate it with one particular slicer i will take a category over here okay let's take category and now let's see i will change it for furniture so now when i'm taking furniture you can see value has been increased and the background color has been changed to green color similarly for office supply it is changing for red color because the year on year percentage is decreasing okay. so in likewise we will be doing this and now i will just delete this and now we will place these values on this particular box over here so first we have to add this so i will place it this over here and i will place this over here so now you can see these values are gone behind that particular shape so i will just select this shape then go in format and just click on send backward okay so once and twice you have to click two times or three times so that these values are coming in front of us right so in this way we have added this particular shapes for here okay so in this way we have added this particular shapes over here all right so now next what we have to do is uh, i will go ahead and add a title for me right so now to add a title what i will do uh, you have to add this year to date sales title so what i will do i will just create a text box and i will name it as year to date sales okay select this and take this particular as 11 okay select this complete first then take it at 11 then make it as a geo bold and now we will do some formattings here select this go in our effects turn off the background select this text okay and text change this color to this one okay and we will just reduce this effect and we will place it over here okay. 
so i will just use my navigation buttons to bring it over here okay so you can see these are my year to date sales okay so we will just increase a font bit to 12 increase the size perfect now it looks good perfect and now what i will do i will just select this value i will go into visualization and i will just increase i will change this to ui bold or semi bold is fine i guess or sergio ui and then bold okay so select sergio and then select bold okay so this is the value which we'll be using perfect now what we have to do is uh, or this doesn't look good let me change it to ui semi bold only or one sec we will take Arial. okay take Arial and take it as 13 13 is fine fallout value Arial. perfect okay so now this is what we have uh, determined our first kpi now next what we have to do is we have to determine all these three kpis and we will be doing following the same procedure uh, we will not do anything different over here so what i will do i will just select this entire kpi okay and i will just control c and control v okay so i have just copied this and now what i will do i will just take it and i will try to place it over here okay so nice and clean so just make it perfectly matching right all right and so this as well so other things we will match it later now what i will do we'll be using the same thing we have to just you know uh just adjust this now we have to just change the major over here so what i will do first first i will change my kpi okay so now to determine our kpi again we have to determine again our uh previous year to date uh profit year to date profit and we will be using same formula again okay so I, what i will do i will fast forward my video and whenever there is required that i should explain you uh, in good way so i will stop there and i will show you what important we have to do because we are following the same procedure now what i will do i will just change this to profit so this is now our year to date profit and we will have to write a calculation to determine year to date profit okay so with this is the calculation for year to date sales i will just copy this control c and i will take a new measure click on new measure okay and just paste it over here and instead of sales i will name it as profit all right and instead of this particular sales we want here it should be what profit okay that is profit per order and i will close this bracket and we'll just hit okay all right then select this particular value over here close this we don't want year to date sales we want year to date profit okay so this is year to date profit then we have to again give here a dollar symbol so select this year to date profit and add a dollar symbol from here okay so you can see the dollar symbol has been added next what i will do i will change this park line as well select this park line so instead of sales per order so remember this filter should be activated over here so remove this particular year you know, sum of sales and we will be taking here a profit per order okay so this is our profit per order and uh, we will change the color for this uh, go in general only visuals lines color and we will take this particular color perfect so we have changed the color as well now what i have to do is i will just take this a bit here perfect and now we have to change our this particular values okay so that is nothing but we have to change i will just take it here a bit left similarly this two as well okay so now we have to add these two trends icons over here and year on your profit as well so but before that we have to do number of calculations right so to do that what we have to do is first we have to determine previous year to date profit okay so this is previous year to date sales i will just copy this Control c right click and create a new measure okay and paste it over here so instead of previous year to date sales this will be previous year to date profit and instead here sales per order it will be profit lot right so this will be profit per order and i will just hit okay 
okay so profit year to date profit has been created previous year to date profit and then we have to determine year on year profit as well so again i will just copy this year on year sales i will just control c right click new measure paste it over here and instead of this we will write it as okay and instead of year just we have to change this sales to profit so this is previous year to, sorry it should be year to date profit okay year to date profit minus previous year to date profit divided by previous year to date profit all right so just hit okay close this and now we will change our profit from here so select this particular icon close this and select here from year on year profit oops not year on year profit okay so now we have to convert again this to percentage form so select this particular measure go in general and instead choose your percentage so it is 4.50 percent now we have to change our icon as well so for that again we have to change our formula so uh, so this is our sales icon so i will just copy this control c and we will add a new measure over here and it will be for i will just paste it over here and instead of sales icon it will be profit icon okay and instead of year on year sales we have to change it to year on year profit okay so this is our year on year profit just hit okay all right so now you can see the value is positive and with respect to if it is positive the value should go up so right we have to change this so change this sales icon and we have to change it with profit icon so here it is profit icon so you can see it has been going upward similarly we have to change the background color of this particular text as well so what we have done here not text of that particular shape as well so for that again we have to write one more calculation that is sales color uh, we have we will copy the sales curl and i will write a new measure for profit color okay just paste it over here and here will be profit curl. okay so this is for profit and instead of sales we will name it as profit over here okay and i will just hit okay right so now what we will do i will just change this conditional formatting so for now i will just take this shape down and then select this particular background image or background shape then go to general and go to effects and change this particular here from here so instead of said sales color we want here profit color okay so this should be profit color all other things will be same if it is green it is your color and this is color. just hit ok and uh, oh, so the conditional formatting has not been changed let's check it again oh so it's again we have to change it to profit color so this should be there okay so this is now profit color selected just click on ok so now you can see it has been converted to green now take this and again put it over here okay so use your arrow buttons to adjust it properly perfect all right so now in this way we have created our year-to-date profit kpi as well 